Hello, and welcome to Every Persona Explained, where we take a look at the origin and representation of every persona. And today, we're taking a look at Fafnir. Fafnir is a dragon from Norse tradition, best known for being killed by Siegfried slash Sigurd. Now, Norse dragons look a little different from their mainland counterparts, being described as more serpentine in nature, but still having arms and legs. So think less Parthenax and more a big snake with limbs. However, he wasn't always a dragon. So there's this guy named Hreidmar, and he's a sorcerer, which is cool, but not important. What is important is that he has five kids. Two daughters named Lingheider and Lofenheider, who also aren't important and whose names I'm pronouncing wrong. And three sons, Otir, Regan, and Fafnir, who are important. One day, Otir was out fishing in the shape of an otter for thematic reasons, I guess, when he's killed by Loki, who was out with a couple of other Aesir and mistook him for a real otter. Later, when they come across Hreitmar's place, they ask for shelter, saying they can provide food with this awesome otter they killed. Hreitmar immediately realizes that's his kid and gets Fafnir and Regan to capture the Aesir. The Aesir say they'll pay for their freedom in gold, and Hreitmar agrees and has Ulter skinned, saying that once the skin is full of, and also covered in, gold, the ransom will be paid. We're just going to skip over the part where he just skinned his kid's body, I guess. So Loki goes out to collect the ransom. He comes across a pike, who is actually a dwarf who lives in a waterfall. His name is Andvare, and he has just a stupid amount of gold. So Loki threatens his life and takes all of his gold, including a ring known as the Andvaranath that Andvare curses to bring misfortune to whomever has it. Loki doesn't care and returns to Hreitmar, fulfills the ransom, and leaves, only mentioning the curse as he's on his way out. Fafnir and Regan see this ludicrous amount of gold and ask for a share, which Hreitmar refuses. This was the wrong decision, as Fafnir decides he'll just kill his father and take the gold for himself. So he does that, and runs off with his murder money to live in a hole in the ground surrounded by his wealth. That, if you think about it, has no real value, because he's not using it for anything, so why hoard it? I don't understand. It's during this time that he takes the shape of a dragon, and I'm not sure if he used magic to do that, or it just happened due to his greed, but either way, Him's dragon now. He also gains the ability to spit poison, so that's something. He stays like this for an unspecified amount of time until one day he's slain by Siegfried slash Sigurd, who was raised by his brother Regan. Siegfried then eats his heart, takes his gold, including the cursed ring, and goes off to have other adventures until he gets murdered himself. Gotta love a happy ending. And that's Fafnir, the dragon that influenced Richard Wagner and J.R.R. Tolkien. So how's he represented in game? Not bad, actually. He has both human and serpentine features. His torso and neck have been elongated, he has claws and a long tail, representing his transition from man to monster. His wings meet at the front of his neck, tied together almost like a cloak or a cape. And his heart is very prominently shown. Lastly, there's his head. In the Volsunga saga, it is said that Fafnir has a helmet called the... Oh dear god. Aigishyamr or the Helm of Awe, that leaves all living creatures terrified. Considering his head is a different color to the rest of his body, I'd say that's a reference to this helmet. While the mechanical design doesn't fit with the traditional description, I think it does thematically work. It's never outright stated why or how Fafnir becomes a dragon, but it can be implied that he becomes a dragon because his greed makes him lose his humanity. This more mechanical design could be a reflection of this as well. He does appear in Innocent Sin and Eternal Punishment, with the Innocent Sin design being a more accurate one, as it's a large, angry lizard. And in Eternal Punishment, maybe having him wear a helmet, so that's okay, I guess. In the duology, Fafnir is in the Strength Arcana, which, yeah, dragon, makes sense. In Royal, however, he's in the Hermit Arcana. This fits well in both orientations, as upright, hermit means corruption, withdrawal, and solitude. While reverse, it means concealment, isolation, and reclusiveness. How incredibly on the nose. His moveset in the duology are the exact same thing. Poison Breath, Frenzy slash Violent Rage, and Medusa's Eye slash Petrifying Glare. These ones being the same move, just with different names. Poison Breath is very good since Fafnir was known for spitting poison, a classic attribute for monsters and dragons. The physical moves are there because... big dragon. And the Petrifying move is likely referenced to the Helm of Awe, there is a missed opportunity to have him weak to sword damage, but overall the moveset here is good. In Royal, not so much. Much of his moveset is nuke damage, 
Now, they did remove poison as an ailment in Royal, so he can't have poison moves. And I can't see how radiation could be lumped in with poison. It also fits his more mechanical design in this game. He does get Evil Smile, a move that inflicts fear, which could be referenced to the Helm of Awe again. Lastly, he gets Gigantomachia, a damage-dealing physical move. He's a giant dragon, so having a strong physical move makes a lot of sense. His trait is Ailment Hunter, giving him an attack increase against enemies inflicted with ailments. This would make more sense if he had got poison moves, but I think it does fit enough. When itemized, he gives the Spiral Reactor Ring, equipment giving its wearer the move Mafraedine. This makes sense with his moveset, and also references the cursed ring in his horde. However, under a Fusion Alarm, he gives the Fire Dragon Horn, a piece of equipment that gives its wearer the move Atomic Flare. This item references the fact that he's a dragon, which are sometimes depicted as having horns. Overall, this is some good representation. The mechanical aesthetic threw me off at first, but I think it works really well. The longer I worked on this video, the more and more I, I just really like how his design is in Royal. I, I didn't get it at first, but when I realized that he turned into a dragon, possibly because he lost his humanity, and they went with a mechanical design to help reflect the loss of his humanity, I, I just... It was really good. I really like it. It's a very good job whoever did it. So thank you very much for watching. Let me know who you want to see next time in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time in Every Persona Explained.